we did a Valentine's week last week that was about relationships and marriage and sex, and intimacy, all that. And some of the calls that we got during sex and intimacy and relationship week for Valentine's day, we had hearts like flying around on the screen behind us. Some of the calls got really heavy. They were hard calls, um, but they were very important calls. And so we didn't end up using them in the Valentine's episodes because we were going for a very specific ethos, right? A very specific tone. But I also didn't want to lose the call. I didn't want to lose the moment that I was able to share that somebody honored me with sharing with them. And um, man, a couple of these calls, we get questions about this stuff all the time. So they're going to help a whole lot of folks. So this is one of those calls you're going to see, like I said, you're going to see hearts flying around. It's going to be like, what is happening? I'm wearing a different shirt, right? If you're watching this whole episode, if you're listening to it, you won't know any different. But um, I really thought this was an important call. So I want you to check this out. Let's go to Ryan in Phoenix, Arizona. What's up, Ryan? Hey, how are you? Thanks for taking my call today. You got it, man. What's up? So let me give you a little backstory here. Um, been married for almost 14 years. Got married kind of young at 22. Um uh, it's just kind of the culture of where we grew up and religion and the expectation is you get married young, you start having kids. Right. And I tried calling off the engagement, uh, didn't feel like it was right. Still wanted to date more and was convinced partially that maybe it was just anxiety that I should still go through with it. That led up to kind of the wedding day and even at the altar, you know, where we're getting married, I wanted to say no. I knew that it wasn't right. And so, you know, with these thoughts and these feelings, so I've been struggling with feelings of regret, um, second guessing pretty much our entire marriage, which has led to kind of one foot in, one foot out, um, never really fully committed 100%. And recently led to a, I, I feel like this kind of led to a recent affair that I had. Um, and so I'm really struggling right now with this thought process. Do I stay? Do I go? She wants to make this work. Um, Why would she want to be I married get, to somebody who has resented her for 15 years, 14 years? That is a very good question. I don't know. And I've asked her that. So I, <sighs> hmm. why is she the wrong person? <sighs> and I want you to articulate it very specifically and don't BS me. Like, why is she the wrong person? I've always been attracted to other women more than her. Okay. So say that in a way that is not a circling, passive-aggressive way. You're not attracted to your wife? Mm, I don't know how to word that. Just yes or no, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it comes down to. Okay. Um, what about her do you not find attractive? Um, she was just, no, or hasn't ever really just been my type if that's even a thing and I, I i struggle saying this out loud i know that's why i'm that's why i'm I, asking you to do it because i want to i want to get out of you live your whole existence is in your feelings sure and it's the articulation of some of these things that really turns the lights on the feelings because feelings aren't right. are, are terrible gps directors they're fantastic yeah. indicators of wreck, car wreck ahead. You need to exit here. But they're terrible um, for giving directions. And sure. your whole life is run by feelings. That's why I'm pushing you. I want you to articulate very specifically. Because let's. Let, I'll just throw something out there, okay? And I know I'm making it uncomfortable. I know it's hard what I'm asking That's you to okay. do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's say your wife is, uh, you don't find her pretty because you think she's overweight. And you have always been attracted to someone who um, is not overweight or in your mind isn't overweight. And yeah. you fixate on her weight and you lean in on, hey, what about this? And what if we ate like this? And what if we did this or whatever? Are there some physical feature of hers? It's just not like, I just think other people are whatever. That is 
feeling after feeling after feeling after feeling after feeling. Mm-hmm. And so I, I want you to own here's a big shift you need, you've got to make. You, you're talking with what I call distance language. This led to this, which led to this, which led to me having an affair. I call bull crap on that. You did have somebody that you felt all along, I shouldn't be marrying, I shouldn't be marrying, and you married him. That happens. That happens. Yeah. And then every day for 14 years, you've chosen to be miserable. That is a conscious daily choice you have made. You yeah. consciously chose to sleep with somebody that wasn't your wife. Nothing led to another thing. You chose that. And I want you, the reason I'm saying that directly is I want you to own it because that's the only way you can then take ownership of what happens next. Because yeah. you're going to be the guy that's like, is going to slowly drown your wife until she finally gets the courage to leave you because you haven't had right. the courage to, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Or the courage to say, after 14 years, I've been lying to you. I actually am not attracted to you in this way. Or I, I think you're beautiful and I think you're wonderful. I'm actually attracted to her too, or her also, or to other women right. too, right? Does that make sense? It's so yeah. there's something about saying things out loud and truthful, even when they hurt and are awful and make you sound like a complete and total ass, which I think you can be, right? So I, no, I, it's, totally. it's all of that in together, but you're living in this mushy, emotive feeling world. And usually, if you listen to the show, I'm having to take big, tough guys and get them to sit in the emotional feeling world. You're the opposite, man. Yeah. You got to get up and face reality. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah and so, yeah. okay, so you, you, let's, let's, I, I don't think it's true, but let's, let's go with it. I'm going to trust you. You made a mistake getting married, right? Yeah. And you're married. Yep. Why have you chosen misery for 14 years? Good question. I feel... There you go. I don't care about your or, feelings. Or Why have you chosen I, misery? I am a people pleaser at okay. heart. Excellent. And I don't like ruffling feathers, and I do that to the detriment of myself. You do that to the detriment of your kids and to the detriment of your wife. True. Yes. And your faith community. That Does that make sense? Yes. Um... Can you think back to moments when y'all were in sync and connected? Yeah, uh, I, I think back and I, I've thought about this. My entire marriage hasn't been a complete sham. I've been happy. We've had happy moments. Um, and I, I have a hard time sparsing out what was different then versus now, knowing that I've always had these underlying thoughts and regrets. This is going to sound so crazy, but I don't think you have. Hmm. Um, as the great Brene Brown says, what you go looking for, you're sure to find. Sure. Tell me about this affair. Where'd you meet this person? Work. Yeah. And how was it? Exciting. Yeah. Honestly. What was it? It was exciting and? And it fulfilled desires that I've had for a long time Okay, about being with somebody that I was more attracted to. What was beneath that attraction? What do you mean? Tell me if I'm off. You've been being told what to do your whole freaking life. Yeah. And you've been riding through life on other people's train tracks your entire life. Yeah. And somebody else essentially picked out your wife for you. Somebody picked out the life for you. They picked out your church. They picked out the building. They picked out the little white picket fence around the house you were going to live in. Somebody else picked out the clothes that your kids are going to wear. They picked out the schools they're going to go to. Everybody's picked out your life for you. And I think you have taken all of that frustration and really what it is, it's rage. And you have put that on your wife. And then somebody comes along and yes, beautiful, beautiful coworker, sexy coworker, laughs at your jokes, all those things. 
maybe does things in bed that your wife won't do, like all that stuff. But beneath that is somebody looking you in the eye and saying, you're freaking Ryan, you can do anything. And for the first time in 14 years, probably 30 years, you felt alive. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. No, you're right. And are you still with that person? With the affair? Uh Uh-huh. No. Did the air run out of that real quick? No. Um, I actually changed jobs. Okay. Um, But... Uh, if I'm being honest, I would love to go back. Okay. Yeah. Have you given up on your marriage? And that's a that's a question you've got to answer honestly. Because if you if you're out of your marriage, dude, have the courage to stop dragging your wife behind a moving car. It's cruel, man. Uh, I agree. I agree. And that's that's where I have these huge conflicting arguments in my brain every single day it's a Uh, real real simple argument it is there's not conflicting back and forth i am going to never call that woman again yes she's sexy yes she's beautiful yes we had a wild fun time and i felt alive but it was cancer i am gonna never call her again when she when pictures of her naked body pop in my mind or things we were doing together when that pops in my mind i'm gonna intentionally choose to not think about it. i'm gonna have another thought ready to go Sure. And I will double down every inch of my, I, every second of my life will be committed to my wife moving forward. We're going to make this thing work. It's yeah. that or it's I'm out. And both of them yeah. take bravery and you haven't displayed that yet. No, no, because I'm afraid to. <laughs> yeah. And you should be. And I'm going to tell you this 1000%. And the people in the YouTube comments, bro, don't read them because they're going to be mean to you or oh, yeah. they're going to be like, you just live your own life, YOLO, or whatever. Right. What's going to happen is you're going to go leave your wife, move into an apartment. You got kids too? Three. Okay. You're going to leave your three kids. You're going to leave your wife and you're going to move into an apartment. And you're going to have that hollow feeling, but this other girl is going to come over for a season. And then you're going to realize one day you're going to roll over when she spends the night and you're going to catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror and you're going to realize you went with you to that new bed. Yeah. And you don't like Ryan. You never have. Yeah. And so you're trapped trying to get somebody else to make you feel worthy. And you found somebody at work, man. You found somebody that made you feel valuable and alive and excited, all those things. I believe with all my guts any couple, any couple can reclaim that in their marriage if they both decide to. And make no mistake, your wife's got to participate in this too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But she can't participate yeah. in something that you haven't been honest about or that you've hem hawed about or you've been like, man, I just, can we like spice some things up? And she's like, I, I don't really know what that means. And you're like, well, you know, I need you to do these things so that I feel alive. Yeah. Or this particular sex act makes me feel alive. Or we go away for the weekend. Or when you do this with the kids, it makes me feel dead inside. Can we try something else? And that starts with you being brave, not blaming her for not doing stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So what are you going to do? I don't know. (laughs) And that's, uh, honestly, that's where I'm struggling the most, is knowing what to do. She wants to make it work. Does she know you cheated Um, on her? She knows. Yeah. Where you've been in counseling and therapy. um, She would not still be wanting to make it work if you've been honest in therapy. And you haven't been. Okay. Have you? No, I I, I feel like I have been. Yeah. You've told her you're not attracted to her and why? I, I have told her all of the reasons. Um. And she still wants to make this work. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm filled with guilt. I'm filled with shame. I'm filled with regret. And, you know, making one decision one way or the other, I'm afraid that if I make a decision, will I continue to regret and then have even more regret on top of regret? 
if I make the wrong decision. And so we're, we've been stuck in this holding pattern of going to therapy and talking and her knowing that I'm still on the fence of not sure what to do. And it's cruel. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I feel like I am holding her hostage. You're holding um, yourself hostage. Yeah. You. Here's what I, here's what I think. You tell me I'm crazy. I think you love this woman that you're married to. And I think like all marriages, she's not perfect and you're not either. And I think you think so little of yourself and saying your needs out loud and saying dreams of yours out loud and going and actually getting out of your own freaking head and doing Doing, acting, making moves in your life, in your career, as a dad, as a husband, as a lover, like getting after it instead of just sitting there and stewing in these, in these loop-de-loop-de-loop-de-loops, loop -de -loop -de -loop man. And I think you have cast all of your feelings of depression, all of your feelings of sadness and of, well, you know, life. You've dumped all of that on your wife. Because you were unsure of the marriage in the first place. I believe you on that. You're unsure of it. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. But I think the question you've got to ask yourself is, what choice am I going to make moving forward? And, dude, you, you can't just sit there stood up, man. you got to make a call because you're drowning. You are teaching your kids this is what love looks like. This is what a, a, a wife, this is, how you, this is how you value and love her. This is what being a decisive dad looks like, a co-parent and a co-creator of a home looks like. Man, they're worth more than that. You are too. I think though until you decide that you're worth being well and you get whole, you're going to continue on this loop-de-loop, -loop, man. And I promise you, you're going to – if you leave your wife and go to this other person, you're going to – it's going to be several months. Before either she leaves you and you get into one of these loop loop, I don't know what we want for dinner, and I don't, and it's going to start looping on you, or um, you're going to realize, oh crap, I went with me. I hate that you're in this position, man. Um, it's an, it, it's it's you've got to start taking ownership right now, right now. Here's the choices I've made up to now. I've chosen misery. I've chosen dishonesty. I've chosen infidelity. And you can also choose to completely hit control, or delete, and become a different person. You can choose that today. Or you can choose to be the guy that left his wife and kids for the woman at work. You can choose that too. But for God's sakes, make a choice, man. Stop dragging your family through it.